It's important to know that no company tolerates frequent DOT violators, and neither do we. First, the abuse of personal conveyance. You can be placed out of service by a, a state patrol officer or at a way station. And two, you might get yourself fired from our company. As a matter of fact, we are in the process of changing our policies regarding the use of personal conveyance exactly because of those reasons, the abuse of it. The unauthorized use of PC may result in your termination. If you're having troubles reaching your destination due to reasons that are beyond you, for example, you got held up at pickup, you got held up at delivery, bad weather conditions, traffic, accidents, inspections, breakdowns, whatever the reason that is beyond you, give us a call and we'll figure something out to make sure that you make it to the destination uh, you know, on time. Do not make decisions by yourself because like I said, making decisions by yourself and using PC in order to advance will get you in a lot of trouble. We always have somebody available to pick up the phone, whether it is during regular business hours or even after hours. There will be always somebody to pick up the phone and help you out. If you're unsure on which number to call, check your binder. On the back of the binder, or in the front, you will have a piece of paper which will have all the numbers that you need whenever you need us. We don't want to fire anybody, but you as a driver should know that your actions also affect other drivers in the company. That's why before you use PC, please give us a call so that we can find the right way for you to reach your destination legally. We're not doing this because we hate you as a driver, but we're doing this to keep our company up and running because this company puts food on the table for more than 100 families and we need to take care of every single one, including ours. Second, logbook violators. In the morning before you start driving, you have to have a 10 to 15 minute on-duty status PTI, pre-trip inspection. Make sure that you have a 10 to 15 minute PTI on duty status before you start driving. The reason for that is if you don't have a PTI and get pulled over, you will get a citation a violation and it will get you in trouble. Do not start your logbook before you are ready. Once you are ready to depart, put the logbook in on duty status, 10 to 15 minutes, do a proper pre-chip inspection around your truck and trailer. Make sure that both trailer and bill of lading numbers are entered correctly in your logbook and start driving. Do not change your logbook before you're ready and just eat into your 14 hour rules of that day. That will actually make you not make it to your destination, miss your appointments, and again, it will get you in trouble. Secondly, make sure that you have a 30 minute break within eight hours. This is very important. We have drivers that do not take their breaks within the eight hours. You need to have a 30 minute break within the eight hours. We recommend you do the break between the fifth and the eighth hour so that you don't have to take a second break if you wanna drive straight to your destination. But we'll leave that totally up to you because we don't want to force anybody to drive more than they can. Which brings me to my next topic, the 14 hour rule. You may only work 14 hours in a day. You have 11 hours of drive time and three hours of on-duty statuses, which are for fuel, pickup, delivery, inspections, everything that has to do with not driving or not sleeping. You cannot exceed 11 hours of driving per day. There are certain exceptions, but in order to keep it simple, keep in mind 14 hours per day, 11 hours of driving, three hours of on-duty statuses, which are fuel, pickup, delivery, drop and hook, anything that is not driving or that is not off-duty. After 11 hours of driving, you need to have 10 consecutive hours of sleeper berth in order to reset those 14 hours for the next day. Now, there are certain exceptions, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but it's important for you to know you cannot drive more than 11 hours. And once you have reach that limit, you need to have 10 hours of sleeper if you want to reset those 11 hours of driving again. Now, the exception to that is the 7-3 or 8-2 split, meaning you can do either eight hours of sleeper and then two hours or seven hours and three hours. How does it work? General rule of thumb, if you have driven all of your 11 hours the day before, you cannot do a split sleeper. You can do a split sleeper only if you have remaining driving hours from the day before. Let me give you an example. So if you drove for only eight hours the day before, you may put yourself in a sleeper berth for seven or eight hours, wake up, drive the remaining three hours of those remaining hours from the day before, 
But then after you have driven those three hours, you must do a three hour or two hour sleeper again. If you did seven hours before, you gotta do a three hour sleeper again. If you did eight hours before, you gotta do a two hour sleeper again. The total amount should equal to 10 hours of sleeper birth in one day. If you're still unclear on how it works, remember, if you have 11 hours of driving the day before, you need to do 10 hours of consecutive sleeper. If you have remaining driving hours from the day before, you may do a 7-3 or 8-2 split sleeper. If you still have questions, please give your dispatcher a call and they will help you out and figure out if you can or can't do a split sleeper. Because we have drivers that do sl split sleepers when they are not allowed to. We have drivers that don't do split sleepers, but they can. So if you have questions, if you want to drive, make sure that you call your dispatch or if it's out of office hours, make sure you call the after hours phone number and they can help you out. This brings us to the final logbook violators thing, which is remarks. Remember drivers, you need to fill in the remarks section of your logbook every time you change a status. That means every time you go on duty, you need to put why you're going on duty. Every time you go off duty or sleeper, you need to put why you go off duty or sleeper. It's something that takes only 30 seconds, but can actually save you a 10 hour out of service violation at a way station or even trouble with our safety department. So there is no reason for you not to actually put the remarks in the logbook. In the morning, when you do your 10 to 15 minute PTI, you need to put PTI in the remarks. When you fuel up, change your status from driving to on duty. You need to put fuel. When you are at pickup, on duty or yard move, and in the remarks section, put loading. Every time you are hooking to a new trailer and dropping your old trailer, you may put it into on duty or yard move, but you also need to put drop and hook in the remarks. Do not forget to update the trailer number and the bill of lading number every time you do a drop and hook or you get loaded with a new load. If you're being inspected by a DOT officer, you need to put on duty inspection. If you are broke down, you need to put it either in sleeper or on duty or yard move. Contact your dispatcher to make sure that you are in the right status and put broke down. If you are hooking to a new trailer and dropping your old trailer, make sure that you put the trailer number of the new trailer onto your logbook. Make sure that the bill of lading number matches with the bill of lading number that you put in the logbook. After you leave the shipper, make sure that you have the correct trailer number and the correct bill of lading number entered in the logbook. All of these are DOT violations and may get you in trouble if you get pulled over and you're missing that information. When you do your 30 minute break, whether it is sleeper or off duty, you need to put break. Every single time you do a change of duty status, you need to put the reason why. This is to keep you as a driver out of trouble and keep rolling on the road instead of getting fired. So just to be clear, every time you change your duty status, you need to update the remarks. If you're going on duty, you need to say why you're going on duty. If you're going off duty, you need to say why you're going off duty. The basic remarks that we ask you as a driver to put in are loading, unloading, PTI, fuel, inspection, breakdown, and drop and hook. At the end of each day, each driver needs to certify their logbooks. Say you went home for the weekend, when you come back on Monday, you need to certify the days for, you know, Saturday, Sunday before you can start your day on Monday. Now, if you still have questions with any of the information that we have talked about in this video, please feel free to call your dispatcher and ask away or the safety department. You can find all the necessary numbers in the back of your binder. So do not hesitate to call us and do not make any decisions on your own. If you want to use personal conveyance, before you use it, give us a call. Every time you change the duty statuses, you need to make sure that you are putting the remarks and please make sure that you do a proper pre-trip inspection that lasts between 10 and 15 minutes in the morning. If you again have any questions, call your dispatcher.